Hello guys and welcome in this new video on the game engine series. Now in the previous video we talked about um, a player state machine something like that. So we actually implemented some state for our players so that our player were actually able to change state in animation. Like for example when I'm jumping, when the player is moving upward it's different when the player is moving downward. You can see we have different animation. The same thing when we're attacking right here and yeah you can see um, the player has a lot to offer right now so in this video right now we actually want to be you know doing something more interesting you know we're going to be creating like a puzzle for our textures so let me show you for example what i mean in the engine.cpp file you can see right here this would be too much to deal with um as the program as you know as this game engine will get huge it will be really complicated to handle uh, this this kind of thing you know we will every time have to call this load function to load the texture for us but what if you can simply create like a puzzle that can actually go and open a file and get all those texture inside and render them and use them in the program and uh, that's what we're gonna be doing but before we get started I want to invite you guys to subscribe to Medical channel leave a comment in the description below if you have any question or concern and I also want to mention that you guys can go out and support my work on patreon you know just a few bucks and that would be a good thing and you can still find the source code in the description below now let's get started Now, as I said, we actually want to create a puzzle for our texture. So for that, we need to go to in, in our texture manager right here. Now you have to add this new method right here called pass textures. So this is a method I add and it, the parameter is actually takes is, you know, the source file, which file we actually going to be passing our texture from. So I think that's straightforward in the cpp file you can see the implementation of that function so if you got the source code you can directly check out and see i'm just trying to explain so that you guys could know what i what i added so we have the past texture function right here so what it basically does is it opened up a file the xml file so the file that is given right here we say open we load the source if anything was wrong then we just you know gave this message to say you know something was wrong you need to check out maybe your source file maybe you didn't give the path correctly and we return false and here uh, so i want to show you that texture manager file so that you know you know what, what is going on so this is the file right here so in my project let me open the assets folder so you guys can see so in my project folder right here I created this file called texture.tml so tml is because I want it to be like that it's not like a special type of that data no it has nothing to do with something like that tml because I say texture you know markup language something like that so just just put whatever you want but you know the file is an xml file so you know we have this tiny xml that we have used to create our map puzzle so we're gonna use that again to actually create this texture puzzle right here this is gonna be really important because we're gonna be dealing with sequence animation in you know the coming videos and you know it will be important for us to be able to create animation and simply pass them in our program and use them without have to deal with the texture every time you know that would be too much work that's why we simply want to create something like this so you create a file like this go ahead and create a file texture.xml if you want tml if that's what you want and inside of that file you will have something like this i hope you guys can see so you have something like this we have the xml version and you know the encoding that's not important and now i simply say textures this is the root element the root xml element and now i can simply add texture every time i want so the texture if you remember when we were loading texture with our load function as you can see in the engine right here we had this id and we had this path so this is exactly what we did here 
but using XML file. So we simply add the ID of that texture, and we also have the path in uh, where the texture is actually stored. And now I think it's clear. In our um, texture manager, what we actually do is we get the root element, which is textures. This is the root element right here, textures, and we want to loop. You know, we want to loop through all these texture right here and pass them using the load function. That's what we're actually doing. So that's why here we simply go ahead and you know we here we create a loop in which we actually you know go element to element. So for each texture right here, we move forward and we simply take the ID, the attribute ID, and the attribute source, and we use the load function that we have above. So the load function simply go ahead and you know handle this easily so and uh, yeah every time uh, if everything was correct we simply return true that means we didn't encounter any kind of problem this function is really straightforward you can use this same format to create all puzzle you want you can want to create a puzzle for i don't know whatever for object entity component because there there are different ways of dealing with entity component system in games you can actually create like a file where you have your entities defined by position size and texture id and when you start your game by passing the map you simply pass those components and throw them in the exact place that you specify in the xml file that's also one way to deal with and that's probably one way we're going to be using later when we start creating entities and throw them on the screen um, to handle everything so what we actually have to do now is to go over to our game engine so we have nothing to change this is all we have to do right here to switch over to your game engine right here and all this we're gonna be commenting this out we don't need this anymore you see this is too much for us we don't need to handle that much information and we can simply call our parser right here you see texture manager get instance pass texture and we simply pass the name of, of the file you remember the file was under assets texture.tml so let me clean the project so you guys make sure i'm not you know faking or doing anything like that so i clean the project so i recompile it so you guys can see down here it's not like i'm a liar but you know you need to make sure it's working you see everything just worked fine and we can even you know report we can even like somehow write a report right here and say okay everything was correct we pass all texture correctly so i'm just going to copy this and paste this before we return this and we simply say textures pass successfully or whatever success or whatever we leave it like that so if I run this, you will see we got the message on the screen. You see here, texture pass success. And you see everything is just fine. We have everything as before. We haven't changed anything in the source code. And what I really find interesting in this is the fact that um, if you want to change, for example, the texture of the player or maybe the background color. So I don't have to come here and recompile the program again. I'll simply go out and open up my xml file right here change this source file right here just change this source and then i'll have a new background and so easy could that be and that's very nice because you don't want to be compiling the program every time you change something you change something and also later when you create for example like a ui or a level editor you don't want to you know deal with that in your in your source code We'll simply create like a, like an upload button in which we we'll simply click on it uh, on the texture and upload it, and that texture will simply be added automatically in this file. You will you will be able to access that in your program in your source code, and you know make animation with it or whatever you might want to do, and that's the idea behind this puzzle. But we also want to add some some important things to our texture manager since this video is not long enough now we also want to add more time so you can see right now our texture manager is not able to you know um the first thing we, we're going to be adding right now is 
uh, if you remember we had we had something like here to make uh, our animation for the background we, we had something like this ratio right here we have this ratio which means how this object how this texture is going to be scrolling according to the camera and for this one as you can see the background is not scrolling with the same speed as the as the sprite right here but it's still moving but you see the way we did it right here this draw function is now condemned to be you know always with this value we don't want that so we want to add like a parameter up here like ratio or translate ratio or um, scroll ratio we want to add something like that so that's why we're going to be going here and say and add something like that it's going to be a float and we'll say scroll scroll ratio also want to add that in the prototype of our function so we go back here and uh, where it is we have this draw function right here we want to add it right here and now we want to add a default value because we don't want to go around and change this everywhere in our code so we simply put zero so if we don't want an object to move according to the camera we simply say okay the scroll ratio is zero so if you have a better name share that with me i don't know scroll ratio or i don't know uh, whatever but i think that's that's something so we make sure that we multiply this guy here with the scroll ratio we simply say scroll ratio now we want to go where we draw our background image i think it was here uh, where is it here and we simply want to add that scroll ratio so let's say for example uh, zero we test it with zero first and see how it's going to respond so let's try to run you see the background is not moving at all okay we don't have to you know somehow deal with this this is also important because if we have uh, if you want to move if you have multi, multi layers in your program and you want to move layers with different uh, ratio then you will have to specify this ratio on each layer and you see the, the the camera will simply use that to update the current state so if i go ahead and put like one this will move with the same speed as the as the the tile set right here since it's moving with the same speed as you see but you see this is not good because it it's somehow i can't see exactly what is going on that's why it's important to have a different ratio like 0 0.4 you know, or 5 or something like that and you will see that it will be better right now so we simply scale down the value of the camera speed and you see the background can now be more smooth and you know and since we have an image which is not huge enough to cover all the screen it's important really to make sure that the scrolling ratio of that background is not the same thing as uh, the one for this for this tile right here because if we do then we probably have the image ends before this tile so let me show you what i mean by that so if i put like two right here it will move faster <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> something like this doesn't make sense at all you see you move faster and there before we ends our tile you see the background isn't there anymore this is how you actually handle that you always make sure that the background will always fit the screen because of that ratio if you move the background too fast then you will have empty spaces and we don't want that and probably you will have to paste that image again you will have to draw that again and you know we want to make sure we always stick with that on the screen we have a huge background and it has like 2000 pixel width so that's that's enough to cover the whole screen uh, so that's actually something we wanted to add there is also something we want to add uh, that's not so important for now but i think we we should add that Here you can see we're not now able to scale anything you know to make our player be uh, bigger than it is so that we can actually uh, increase the size of a component so that's why we're going to be adding right now so uh, we're going to do the same thing in our texture manager go ahead and add two more parameters two more floats so right here before the ratio we'll say float float and we simply add like um, we say x scale or scale x whatever you might want to call it 
scale x this is scale on the x axis we say float on the y this is not the thing. scale y so all this has also we also have to do this here down here but for now just um, just do it up here and uh, we also want to add this in our you know prototype so that we don't have any oh, oh no i don't like this well uh what was it the view project perspective i need to go back to the normal so we have the function right here go before the ratio right here i paste that and now we need to add default values it's gonna be one so if you don't want anything you don't just put one now how is this going to affect the value uh, of our of our players so we simply go here and implement that now the destination rect we need to set we need to change the size of the destination because you know the source the source uh, rectangle is the part of the image we want to draw so we actually take exactly the size of the player of a sprite and by drawing it on the screen we simply change this cut the, the size of that according to the scale value we've given that's why we simply go here and multiply this oh I'm sorry and multiply this by the scale x and this one by the scale scale y uh yeah scale y there is something missing here i'll make sure i also have it here scale y okay perfect and now um yeah we're not using that draw function but we, we i think we're using it yeah we're using it in, in this guy here so we can add something to see right now let's add something like 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 And we simply add this like this so our scale x and scale i uh, y is going to be 0 0.5 so if we're trying to compile this ah there's still something missing float scale ah here what is wrong with this thing this float is not intended to be there here also there's one float ah because of this Sorry. yeah i always have this kind of Oh, messing stuff around compile now you can see the background is smaller we just scale it down and we can do the same thing for all object we want so that's actually the the, the idea be, uh, behind this and i think that's really great because you know according to the screen that you will have you want to you know somehow scale your image down or up to have a better result but if you scale it up then the pixel you know you will have a light and the image will be weird to see that's why you let me go and multiply this by two that's why you wanna you see that's really huge but yeah it's also nice because you will always have something around you will never have empty spaces this could be good when you have a sky background or something like that and that's really nice so guys i think that's enough for this video thank you guys for watching videos on Medico channel i hope this is helping you if it does let me know in the comment section below it really encouraged me to know that i'm actually doing something worth it and uh, you know you can still go out and support me on patreon or a couple of bucks a month that won't be a uh, you know bad idea and also don't leave without subscribing like and share with those people that could you know have interest in this kind of content so see you in the next video we're going to be doing more stuff out